There stands Jackson, like a stone wall, rally behind the Virginians. Brigadier General Bernard E. B., Confederate States Army, at First Bull Run. Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we'll begin with Part 2 of the First Battle Bull Run, also known as the First Manassas, on July 21st, 1861. Quiet had fallen upon the battlefield, punctuated by the occasional artillery barrage. Sometime afternoon, Union Artillery Commander Griffin decided to move two of his cannons to the southern end of his line. He hoped to provide an enfilade fire against the Confederates. Unfortunately for him, the 33rd Virginia, whose men were outfitted in blue, once again looking like Union soldiers, and this kind of seems like a familiar thing happening, were mistaken by Major William F. Berry as Union troops, allowing the Confederates to close with the Union soldiers and attack with a surprise volley followed up by Jeb Stuart's cavalry attack on the 11th New York Volunteer Infantry, a.k.a. Ellsworth's Firezwabs, who were supporting the Union artillery. The attack scattered both the Union artillery and infantry, and capitalizing on the success, Stonewall Jackson ordered his regiments to charge the other artillery units. Success was quick, and the capture of the Union guns turned the tide of the battle. During the fighting, reinforcements arrived on the Confederate left flank. These comprised of several more fresh brigades of soldiers, which put an incredible pressure on the Union's right flank. Jackson continued to press the attack, telling soldiers of the 4th Virginia Infantry, Reserve your fire until they come within 50 yards, then fire and give them the bayonet. When you charge, yell like furies. This is the first recorded instance of the rebel yell that Union soldiers had become disturbed by ever since. Finally, around 4 p.m., the last of the Union troops were pushed off Henry House Hill, by a charge of two regiments from Colonel Philip St. George. This started a cascading effect which began to break the Union flank apart. As the Union soldiers began to run, General Beauregard gave the order to advance and Confederate forces swept forth. To the west at Chin Ridge, which had been occupied by Colonel Oliver O. Howard's brigade, was attacked by two additional Confederate brigades, led once again by the infamous Colonel Jubal A. Early and Brigadier General Kirby Smith. These units crushed Howard's brigade, and Beauregard ordered his entire line forward while McDowell's forces began to crumble and retreat. With their inexperience and the confusion, the Union troops could not be rallied by their commanders, and a full-on rout began to happen. Within minutes, the entire Union line ran at full speed away from the fighting. The Confederate soldiers tried to follow for a short time. However, they were exhausted and were unable to continue without risking themselves. They were ordered to halt and allow the Union troops to run. The biggest blow to both sides was the losses of senior officers. Both armies were comprised of inexperienced soldiers, and in order to successfully lead, the officers were needed to lead by example. This resulted in the deaths of more officers than would normally occur. Those among the dead were Colonel James Cameron, brother of President Lincoln's Secretary of War Simon Cameron, and among the Confederate casualties was Colonel Francis S. Bartow, who was the first Confederate brigade commander to be killed, and also, as I said earlier, General B, who was mortally wounded during the day, died during the following day. Even though Johnston was arguably the reason for the victory, Beauregard received most of the acclaim. Beauregard was promoted to full general in the Confederate Army, and Jackson, who was arguably the most important tactical contributor, received no special recognition at all. But he would achieve that glory later in his 1862 Valley Campaign. In turn, Irvin McDowell was blamed for the mistakes of almost all the Union leaders, even though he himself was not responsible for much of the erroneous commands given. He was shortly replaced by Major General George B. McClellan, who was named General-in-Chief of all Union armies. On a side note, the name of the battle has caused controversy since 1861. The Union army frequently names battles after significant rivers and creeks that played a role in the fighting, while the Confederates generally used names of nearby towns and farms. The U.S. National Park Services uses the Confederate name for the National Battlefield Park, but the Union name Bull Run is also used widely and is popular in literature. Also, there was battlefield confusion between the battle flags, especially the Confederacy Stars and Bars and the Union Stars and Stripes. This is believed to have led to an adoption of the Confederate battle flag, which eventually became the most popular symbol of the Confederacy and later of the South in general. At the end of the battle, the losses were 2,896 U.S. casualties and 1,982 Confederates that were lost. Please join us next time as we cover the Missouri Campaign for 1861. The next battle will be at Boonville, Missouri, June 17, 1861.